joining us um, for our final full package webinar series for 2022. As always, um, this is being recorded and I will send around a copy after this and it will also be posted on the Bow Digital social media platforms as well. Um, please feel free to ask any questions that you have in the chat. Um, I'll be monitoring that and I can um, have Bill and Paul answer those questions as the webinar is going. Um, but I am excited to introduce two industry friends um, on our webinar today. So we have Paul Stein and Bill Svoboda, sorry, um, founders of Close Simple. Um, they have been friends uh, to me for the last five years, but also to Bo Digital as a, as a whole company and Wayne as well. Um, so welcome, guys. Please uh, up, tell me guys a little bit about yourself and your company. Paul, you kick it off. You're CEO of Close Simple here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Paul Stein, CEO and co-founder of Close Simple. And uh, gosh, Bill, we've been uh, really bringing our product to market in the title and escrow space uh, for real estate attorneys for the last five years. I believe in, in the beginning of 2018 is when we uh, really started, brought and had our first clients nationally. So we're coming up on five years here, which is really exciting. Um, but really, we exist to help title and escrow companies, again, real estate attorneys, just elevate the closing process, uh, really elevate the closing experience for buyers, sellers, realtors, lenders. And that's basically everything we do is to uh, just with that core focus of bringing transparency to this closing process. And then, of course, make it really easy for uh, the staff, the paralegals, the escrow officers, the processors who are who are actually executing and, and working through this process. So that's what we do. Bill, do you want to introduce yourself too? Yeah, Bill Swart, a co-founder here. And uh, you know, Heather, it's funny to think five years in this industry, like national conferences, all the stuff, like time flies when you're in title. I got a buddy actually, he was, uh, he does all these conferences and he goes, you're at a conference all the time. Does your industry ever even work? You have so many conferences, but that's how we get to know people like you and <laughs> our clients around the country. It's just crazy. Like this is a family industry. I love it. Very, very true. And when I was announcing you guys, I was like, holy cow, I've been in this industry for five years. Like that's hard for me to believe. Um, time really does fly, but I'm grateful that I've, you know, been blessed to meet you guys and get to work with you. So um, thank you again for joining me today. Um, people in the industry know you guys kind of as the pizza tracker for title. What does that mean exactly? Can you walk me through that product a bit? Paul, you hit it off with that one because you, you've you architected this whole thing with our whole dev team. So like, you know this in and out. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Heather, you know, you can track your, I guess it, we used to say $7 Domino's order. And now it's probably like a $15 Domino's order. But if we like to say, if you can track your $15 Domino's order from the time it's like ordered to being made to in the oven to being delivered, we feel like you should be able to track your half million dollar, quarter million dollar, $750,000 home purchase too. And what's really cool about it is as Domino's brought transparency to pizza and what's happening, you know, we can help title and escrow companies bring that to their process where it was once just sort of this thing, this black hole, if you will, of what's happening. Now we can actually walk through the process and our, and our system is set up so that we can integrate with the title software, whatever software platform that they're using to basically just make it really easy to kick off these quick hitter updates, files, op files open, uh, title commitment complete. Closing scheduled. Here's your documents that you're going to be reviewing. And then here's the sort of thank you that goes out after that. So we've distilled it down. And what happens is now people know that there's an actual process that they're in. They know what's going on and it's proactive. So our, our clients will tell us, you actually put the answers to our clients' questions in their hands before they have the question. Does that make sense? So when we think about it, it's really just the process is pretty standard across the country. You go through these five steps, a little, little bit different on the West Coast versus attorney states versus whatever, but we can distill it down and make it simple for everyone. And it's really effective then in, in sort of presenting that process to all of the parties in the transaction. For sure, no. And I, I'm a person that definitely utilizes the pizza tracker because when I order it, I'm like, where is it immediately? So. I love this so that you guys offer this. Um, for title companies who have been hesitant to invest in upgrades of technology like this, 
What success stories have you heard that may encourage others to use Closeable? Bill, your turn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great question, Heather. I mean, right now it seems like everybody in title is doubling down on tech. We've just gone out of a crazy two years of COVID, refis, and you know this huge burst of order numbers. People are just trying to get their head above the water. Now they can actually think about their business again. And technology is one of those things. We're talking to people every day, every week about this. And they're like, my team now is looking for ways to do more with less. We want to make it efficiency, efficiency. But they're also looking for ways to differentiate other. I mean, that's one of the biggest things we hear, Paul. They want a way to stand out from the next title company or a or real estate attorney. It's just, what am I going to do to attract a realtor to my title company? to my staff and this is a real differentiator so heather it's just like as people are thinking about technology it's a really interesting i think cross section where we're playing right there communication and marketing we help in both areas yeah and i would just just to add to that um before the pizza tracker came out you know if your pizza wasn't like in your at your door within the first like 20 minutes, you were picking up the phone and calling. I just imagine like every Domino's location across the country had like a 17 year old kid just answering the phone all night. Don't worry. It's on the way. 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 And I think that's like what the, that's what the experience of sitting in the, you know, escrow processor seat is like, don't worry. We're working on it. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And with the pizza tracker, now they don't get those calls. With the closed simple tracker, now they don't get those calls. So our largest customers say within the first 120 days, 90 to 120 days of rolling out closed simple, they'll see a reduction of at least 20% in terms of inbound phone calls. So one out of five phone calls not coming in. Our Bill, tell that story about that that escrow company in in California. Yeah, yeah. Like I love this. Yes, um, it's fun because we get to chat with clients every once in a while. You know, everybody's busy, but when you get somebody on the phone, it means a lot. So this, uh, the owner of this title company was going, Hey Bill, crazy timing on this. Last week I was just talking to a real estate agent and that realtor just told me that because of the text message updates, because of the emails, you know, because they can see what's going on, they're asking our staff 75% fewer questions than the other title company they also close with. And I laughed and I go, that's amazing. And I had to laugh because I go, so they're still closing with another title company and they're asking you guys that much. What are we going to do to get 100% of their orders over to you? And those are the kind of stories we love. One, it made them more efficient. Think about how many fewer questions that team is doing, replying to reactively during the day, what their brain space feels like. Second, now that's a real differentiator. Why is that realtor going anywhere else? If they're asking 75% fewer questions, why is there even a choice? So that was a fun one, Paul. That was a good one to hear. Uh, yeah. And we have, and we, yeah, we have clients telling us on the differentiation side, they take what we're doing into their sales calls and that's how they're pitching their title company. We're going to yeah. communicate differently with you. You're going to get these updates. You're going to have access to all of your content and, uh, they're walking out with new deals. So really it's the same yeah. time make money. It's kind of cheesy. The lender, we, Paul, that, we remember that lender recently? We heard from one of our clients. They just showed off. This is what our communication is. They got two new lenders that go, I want your business. I want to refer business your way because I need that. You know, how, what does that mean, Heather? Two new lender relationships because of we're just texting you or we're emailing, you know? No, that's... Awesome. And I know it's, it's crazy, but like keeping up with the times, like obviously we have everything at our fingertips and we can find anything in a matter of seconds. And, you know, now with like the pizza tracker, for example, you can see the actual car moving on the street until it gets to your house. And so like you can be <laughs> waiting at your door while they're walking up your sidewalk or whatever. So like, this is fantastic. I think, um, you know, like you're saying, like people love this because they want that information quickly, easily accessible. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. And I'd love to hear stories like that because that is very true in this day and age. Well, Heather, one thing that maybe worth noting is, you know, like with our clients, we get to really help them with their processes a lot too. Last year, Paul, close simple, last calendar year, this calendar year is going to be crazy number also, but last year, 50 million text messages and emails we sent out, you know, so 
if you're thinking about impact, like we're seeing the best practices and making sure that title company is putting their best foot forward. So they don't have to think about how should we communicate if close simple can just help you level up, you do what you're doing. We do what we do. We make you look like a rock star. That's our goal. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you actually talk a little bit about your integrations with the title production software companies and how that works? Oh, yeah. Maybe. You so, know that one. Yeah. I can definitely take this one. So uh, we integrate with SoftPro, RamQuest, Resware. And then what's interesting is our first ever integration was with, uh, with green folders, which is kind of this like old sort of like, you know, uh, digital document solution that sits on top of a couple other ones. So we still have that one that we support as well. Um, but really the primary, those are the primary platforms we integrate with. And what's cool is we have like full automation capabilities in each of those platforms too. So we, obviously Resware is built on automation, but as you're completing actions, our system like hangs right off to the side and like, we don't ask you to change your workflow at all. They basically, we, we basically just say, when you, when you complete this workflow item, that'll talk to Close Simple and it'll do this over here. With SoftPro, we have a ton of automation capabilities and uh, likewise with RamQuest where we really just try to say, how do you do business today? And then we can sync up updates going out in the exact same process. Now, that said, title companies are still adopting automation. So uh, oftentimes when we do an implementation, it's the first time they're actually doing something with automation. And what's great about that is we, we can do the entire implementation, set them up for success with it. And all of a sudden they're just completing a task and everything else happens in the background versus it having any other sort of interaction. So we've worked really hard on the integrations to ensure that there's never any double data entry. We can, you know, share documents out of the, the different systems as well as share documents back into those systems. And we work very closely with those partners to ensure that it's just as simple as possible for, for the folks who are actually using our software internally. 100% Paul, right on. And our name's close simple. If it's not simple, we named it wrong, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I know you're saying like your communication is from the beginning of this process to the end of this process. And so you've talked a lot about how, you know, less phone calls to title companies and so on and so forth. But if you had to list, you know, a couple of bullet points of how it helps the title company, what would you say? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. We kind of come back to our number one and number two value props, save time, uh, and then differentiation, make more money. Um, and I would just say, you know, the, the different companies we work with, it's either, it's on one or one of two things. It's like when we first did our initial implementation of Close Simple in the space, the company literally said, we can't even, we don't even like tell our realtors that we got the file and that we're working on it, right? So like we can help a company go from, we are really bad at communication to, wow, we're at least getting them to that sort of step one and then some. The second thing is like, there's a lot of companies out there that are doing what we do manually. So they send a Friday update. Here's everything that's happening on your transactions or they work really hard to communicate. And we come in and go like, you're doing all this manual work. Like, let's just automate it out of your production software. And they'll save between 30 and 60 minutes per file just by eliminating all of the manual emails and mm -hmm. texts, or they don't even do text, but emails that they're sending out. Who is on this file again? Adding them to the email, typing it out, hitting send, or they're using like quick parts in Outlook, or they've got some different hacks that they've done. 30 to 60 miles, or 30 to 60 minutes, just by automating some of this stuff. So like we could, like every company kind of approaches this differently. Um, and it's interesting, Heather, uh, at the beginning, when you first met us, when we'd have conversations with title companies five years ago, it was like, you have this problem, right? Like you a struggle with communication. And then they'd be like, well, I don't know. And like, you, we'd have to like sell them on this idea that they had a problem. Like we, we have this problem with communication. And then we'd be like, and we're the solution, right? So check it out. It was like this double sale we had to do. And today it feels like everyone's calling us and saying, I need automation. I need to commun communicate better with my clients. It's what's being expected. And really what we're doing is saying, you know, you mentioned it earlier about watching the delivery, you know, driver come. Bill talks about Uber a lot. Uber says, we're going to show you exactly where your driver is. And what's happened is like all these experiences around us, around this industry have really been elevated. And now we can say, 
we can provide the same level of transparency and experience to what your consumers are getting everywhere else. Like they've, people are coming to expect this and now we can help people very quickly get to the next level in terms of uh, what the client, what that customer experience is. Does that make sense? Hopefully though, there's, there's three bullets that I, I think in there, you know? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Bill, is there something you wanted to add there? Paul did a great job with it. We just like making the title company look good. They didn't get in the, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, communication wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a premium. It wasn't an expectation. It was, you give us the work, we'll get it done. But, uh, you know, we just want to help take that load of work off of their place so they can do what they do best. We like to say, make the title company look like a rock star. You know, yep. like that's what we love doing. Absolutely. No, that's... That's awesome. And I'm sure everyone who has been working with you guys are very grateful for this. And I know like when I'm going through the, the process, I would love to have a service like that um, because I am a millennial and I like things that, I mean, I think everybody does now, but things to be easy, simple, quick. Um, but we have several um, underwriters on this call or, you know, registered to watch the recording afterwards. How would under an underwriting agency staff talk about close symbol to their agents? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I, again, I think it's um, Bill kind of hit it on the head. Like what's the most, if, if you're, if you're an underwriter rep today, you're walking into an agency and going, what are the biggest things on your mind? And right now across the industry, it's volumes down, um, I'm trying to figure out how to keep my staff or what I'm going to do with that. Um, there's, they're talking about, I have a minute, like Bill said, to actually think about my business. What should I be thinking about? Um, and I think just in general, people are just going, how do I come out of this in a different position? How do I get through this sort of phase, but also know that I'm coming out at thinking about my business differently versus if, you know, when, when, when the order counts come back, that sort of thing. So I would expect that those are the conversations as we talk to underwriter reps across the country, that's what they're saying they're talking to their clients about. And I think what, what we're excited about is we kind of have solves for each of those. And we're really trying to partner with the, with underwriter reps, with um, title companies in a true partnership to say, what are your biggest needs right now? And then we can tailor a solution to what that looks like. And I think, you know, I, if I was, if I was in their shoes, I'd be looking for what are the solutions that are going to help like solve these sort of like right in front of me needs that uh, title industry companies, real estate attorneys are having today. And again, it kind of comes back to our value props and exactly why we exist is sort of targeted for what's happening today. So I don't know what you're hearing, Heather, but like those are the things that I'm hearing and those are the things that on the underwriters are telling me that they're hearing. So I don't know. Uh, you tell me, am I, am I on the mark, I guess, for what you're hearing in the industry? No, absolutely. I think you are. I think it is great to hear what you guys are hearing as well. Um, and I think it's good to hear from, from you guys um, so other people can can understand how they would, you know, talk about you guys, the process um, to their agents. So no, I think that's great. Um, you guys recently announced a new customer portal. How does that enhance the experience for realtors, lenders, and homeowners? Um, I guess, can you walk me through that addition of it? You go first, Bill. Yeah, pass it over, Bill. Well, he hasn't done much. Well, the way, the, the, yeah, we, we, we can both. Paul and I can both fill up the air pretty easy with Canva. So um, the portal, the easiest way to think about it is like the power is now in the hands of the consumer, realtor, and lender. Um, if we could create a way to help a title company automate that communication out with texts and emails, the next step is to take it from that proactive communication to really on demand where anybody at any time can log in, see the status, look at it. A realtor can see every open listing Every open closing, I should say, with the title company, the buyer or seller can see it. A lender can log in. In the future, we're putting e-signing into it. Like we're building the capabilities to where now it can create more of a hub for that closing. And it's again, like Paul already said, it's automated out of the title production software. No more work from that escrow officer processor. So the text goes out, the email goes out, as well as the update in the portal actions can happen. Paul, talk about some of the features that we have. And, oh, and one other thing though, 
it's all white labeled to the title company. Again, we want to make the title company the rock star. We're not putting clothes simple on the whole. Like, it's your brand, your colors, our staff sets it up. But, Paul, talk about some of the features that we've built into the portal. You know, and this is only growing, too. Yeah, this is this has been fun. You know, we had so many requests for features that just sort of lend themselves to needing to be behind a, uh, sec- a secure place. So Portal just became kind of the next thing. When we... Bill, when we first got into the industry, we would be like, nobody wants another username and password, do emails and texts. And now we're like, okay, well, some things should require a level of security, but we're trying to do this in a way that's thoughtful. So like from everything from like, you can use your face ID to log in. So if you can open your phone, you can access this portal to it's web-based. There's no app to download. Uh, it's going to work on a computer. Like I'm sitting here in front of my laptop. It's going to work on the phone. And regardless of where you're like viewing this, it's going to trans, it's going to sort of respond to that and be easy to access. There's two way document sharing, uh, being able to provide documents to clients as well as receive them. And those get uploaded directly into the title production software, which is slick. They can just take a picture of their ID uploaded or any other documents, um, that they want. Um, you know, we've, we've got a really fun roadmap coming on this as well. Buyer seller info sheets, being able to fill forms and have that information move seamlessly into the title production software. Bill mentioned e-signing, you know, so it, it, it really is kind of becoming this one-stop shop at this digital closing experience that we, that everyone's kind of trying to figure out right now. The nice thing is it just integrates with the current software. So you can really you know, modernize what you're doing, um, even on the older platforms. And you don't have to like do a whole lot in terms of upgrades here or there to get this to work. Awesome. No, that's great. Um, well, for sake of time, I'm going to ask like one or two more questions and then we can get to the fun stuff. Um, what else should people know about the power of your product? Do they have to be a large agent, I guess, to use it? No, no. Agents every size see the impact. You know, if it's a smaller company, it really helps them differentiate and do more with less people. If it's a bigger company, oh gosh. I mean, the power of having, you know, we have one client, 70 offices, you know, each of those 70 offices doing the same process, communicating the same thing across one state. Like how powerful is that, Heather? You know, it's like, you know how this industry works. Like, Each office could almost be autonomous, but now as a company, if you have one voice going out, that's your brand. And that right there alone is huge for big agents, you know? Yeah. We work with clients that close 25 deals a month and clients that close tens of thousands, you know? So it really does work across the board. And what's interesting is everyone's asking the same questions. What should my process be? What's the best way to communicate? Again, on both sides of that. And, and those are some of the fun conversations we go, well, here's what we're seeing. And here's the six you know, areas that you can really see the, the uh, kind of realize that opportunity. Yep. Absolutely. No, that's fantastic. Um, so you guys speak all over the country and you have a pulse like we do in the title agents um, on what title agents are worried about and so on and so forth. So what do you see as a big opportunity for 2023? Paul, what do you think? (laughs) Utah, I I do a lot of speaking. You talk to a lot of people. Like, what's your first gut reaction on this? Like, what's the opportunity? We talk about that a lot here. Yeah, I mean, I think right now with sort of the way the market is, and, you know, even as we talk with folks across the country, we are in Minneapolis. And I think, you know, what's happening in our market is, it seems like it's pretty consistent with what's happening everywhere else. And I would just say like across the industry, there's a lot of unknowns, like not just in our space, but for, you know, we, we co-op, we've co-officed for the last 18 months at a brokerage. So we're constantly in conversations with realtors and obviously like on the lender side too, Bill was just meeting with a couple uh, people that we know who, recently started their own like sort of like mortgage origination thing. And it seems like the people who are really good at what they do are getting stuff done today, but because there's just so much unknown, it feels like from where we sit in the process, 
to be able to go out and start having conversations with the lenders in the, in your sort of network, with the brokers in your network and going, right now we all have this opportunity to go, how are we going to work more closely together? What can we be doing to provide a better service? I think the opportunity right now is really how do you strengthen the partnerships that you have today and go out, go out and build new ones with this idea that we're all going to come out of this in a different position. And if we can kind of like work together to define what that looks like and how do we all kind of win going forward to me, that's, those are the conversations I'd be having while people have time to actually do it. Whereas over the last, you know, two years, it's just been like hair on fire, you know? So that's what I think the opportunity is. And who knows that could, who knows what that means, but right now is the time to be going out and going, how do we, how do we do better business together? How do I, in, how do I increase my network? Absolutely. Heather, I'd say this right now from my standpoint, because Paul hit it on the head, those relationships and getting tighter, 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 doubling down. That's one thing. I, I was just in Ohio a few weeks ago, giving a few talks actually. And I, at this point, it's differentiate or die season, differentiate or die. Mm -hmm. Like consumers and realtors are not looking for the same anymore. It's how are we going to differentiate? Um, Paul, there's one large title company in the Midwest here, the title team. You know, Nick Hacker, if you're at all involved in Alta stuff, Nick Hacker, huge guy. Uh, he's at the title team. They used to be a lot of different companies and they're brand they rebranded, did everything under one umbrella, created this tighter approach. And now in this down market, what is everybody under the umbrella of the title team? You know, so, and Heather, that might be a little hat, you know, hat nod or whatever the term is for you. Like what you all can do with a title company now with rebranding, repositioning, customer experience, how are people going to differentiate what Paul said, the relationships double there, but also double down on what are we going to do different? I think that's the opportunity. Yeah. While you both have been speaking, um, I was just thinking that's kind of how we are talking internally as well. Um, you know, we just had our end of the year meeting and, and looking at next year and what we can be doing in you know, we're having the same conversations. What can we do to differentiate? How can we build those relationships? So yeah, we're seeing it as well. And we're, um, you guys are definitely on the right path. And I think you're right. That is, you know, the big opportunity for 2023, for sure. Um, before I jump into my lightning round questions, um, do you guys have anything else that you wanted to touch, you know, base on that we haven't yet? I don't think so. This has been a, this has been awesome, Heather. I feel like we need to turn around and ask you all these questions. These are good questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so how this last round goes, um, I'm just going to ask a simple question, and whatever comes to mind first will be your answer. Um, you, the rule is though, you both have to answer. Okay. So this first one I thought about because of the pizza tracking um, setup that you guys have, but do you prefer texting or talking? Well, you, you got to go first. Rapid fire. You go first. I think this. I text. I, I think I text faster. Yeah, I, I like to talk. Talk. Perfect. Favorite holiday. Mm. Thanksgiving. Christmas. Place you most want to travel to. Bali. The Mediterranean. Very nice. I love to hear these answers because everyone's so different and unique. Um, cake or pie? Pie. Pie. Is it okay for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? Mixed feelings. I think they should. Yeah, yes, 100%. It's a cookie. Yes. A cracker. Would you rather climb a mountain or jump from a plane? jump from a plane easier climb climb a mountain for sure stability you have your feet on the ground no matter what that's how kind of how i feel <laughs> uh, is it okay to double dip at a party 100 <laughs> percent. no no way so don't attend bill's parties <laughs> noted um, no, I, I invite people who are busy. I, you know, like I would be privileged. That's why you have to throw an amazing party to keep the attention. 
you know. Oh, we're talking about two different types of double dipping here. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about you take a bite out of your cracker and then put it back. Oh, into your no, no, no. I don't, I, I don't like that. No, I was talking <laughs> about an actual party. Yeah, yeah. No, What's I do your... not support double dipping crackers. No. <laughs> What's your favorite type of car? BMW. Not really a car person. I'll say a truck. Okay. What's your favorite type of truck then? Oh, wow. <laughs> they, probably like a Chevy. Chevy. Do you prefer giving presents or getting presents? Giving. Giving. And what song would you choose to sing for karaoke? Gosh, that's a good one. Um, something uh, my go to boys. is there you go. Back my go to is Wonderwall by Oasis. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you guys. That's all I have. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you guys joining me today and having fun there at the end, um, answering those questions. Um, we will again have this recording posted on our social media so you guys can find it there. Feel free to share it on your guys's as well. Um, if you guys have any follow up questions, we are happy to answer those, but we appreciate your time today. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Great Thank job, you. Heather. This was fun. Thank you. You guys have a good one. And Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone.